All right. Well, gang, last year we all dressed for the occasion. I want to know, does everybody have Star Wars gear on for Star Wars Day? Amanda? Uh, not presently. Oh, uh, okay. I know right. I failed. I'm sorry. Steve? I am, of course. I have my Battle of oh, Yavin. Oh, Battle of Yavin. That, that's that's sure. right. Yeah, like I was, mm-hmm. at, like I was at the battle. <laughs> my yep. veteran. Brilliant. Hat. I have my Ewoks Battle for Endor shirt on, which was I a could, gift from... I could uh, tell by the font, like just Murphy. by the top yep. letter. <laughs> there it like, is. That's totally a yep. battle for Endor. Yes. <laughs> yep, poster makes no sense. I've got my Mandalorian May the Force Be With You cup. Does that Perfect. count? It does count. Go. Okay. Yeah, good. yeah good. that's enough. That's good enough. Oh, wow. All right. Welcome to a special crossover between How's Things, a podcast from the David A. Howe Public Library, and This Endorian Life, a Star Wars podcast from the Radio Meanwhile Network. My name is Steve Rudd. And I'm Amanda Smith from the David A. Howe Library. And I'm Nick Gunning from both. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Good to be back. Yeah, today we are discussing the original novel, Star Wars, The Princess and the Scoundrel. This book was released in hardcover by Random House on August 16th, 2022. Very recent. Yeah. Well, today's book was written by Beth Revis. She has written a lot of other mm. things. And uh, her Star Wars credits includes contributions to the Forces of Destiny series. I don't know if you guys have seen those shorts, but the shorts are pretty good. And then they have junior level books that go along with them. She's also published several short stories in, in all the various Star Wars anthologies, and she's written the YA novel Rebel Rising, which I think maybe explains some of the Rogue One connections we had in this book. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. This was also released as an audiobook with Saska Maraveld reading the Leia sections. She'd previously <laughs> narrated Claudia Gray's Leia, Princess of Alderaan, which is a really good book and a great uh, manga series as well. And mm-hmm. she read last year's pick, Alphabet Squadron, and Steve hated her reading of that book. (laughs) (laughs) She's back. She's back. Uh, And the Han Solo sections here were read by Mark Thompson. Uh, Mm. He's done a ton of, like a ton of Star Wars audiobooks back in the legacy era and in the current, like the Disney canon, a bunch of things. Amanda, he read Light of the Jedi, which was our 2021 pick for How's Things. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like I knew his voice when I, because I listened to this on audiobook. And I realized, huh, I know him because I listened to um, Vision of the Future uh, sometime oh, last okay. year. So, yeah, and he did really well, like going back and forth between various voices. Yeah, he's so I was like, I know that guy. He is good. Han is like, like, he did a good Han solo. Yeah, <laughs> he did really well. Oh, you guys good. liked the Han? See, I, I was okay with the Leia, and I thought his Han sounded like Walter Matthau. He's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> he did have a little bit of like a Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota there, like yeah. in his. He did have that every yeah. once in a while, but like, it was good. I, I, I thought well, he's doing Han pretty well. I think. Yeah, the essence of it, I thought he captured well, and Leia's, I mm. wasn't as mm. fond of. Okay, honestly, well, I didn't think she sounded anything like Leia. Like he was clearly going for a Harrison Ford impression, and yeah. I don't think she was. I think she was just kind of reading it straight. Mm. I did. Right. I did the audiobook, but I finished in with the hardcover. So I kind of like went back and forth depending on like mm. what I was doing. Cause I can't just sit around and listen to an audiobook, you know, like I can sit and read, but I can't yeah. just like oh, that's sit fair. motionless. That's fair. And listen to an you can't sit around and listen. I can't drive yeah. and read. So <laughs> that works. that's, that's how, how that works. works. Yes. Uh, I also want to <laughs> point out that as is what happened last year with alphabet squadron, I, put a hold on the book and waited for it to come to me. And Amanda just ripped it off the shelves, <laughs> flouting protocol. Yep. So it's another yep. tradition. <laughs> Not checking it out to myself. Yep. That's an abuse of power. Um, it's true. So this is, uh, Amanda, you and I have done this four years in a row. Uh, Steve and I have been reading Star Wars together for <laughs> about 20 years now. But uh, <laughs> we we are sort of, um, so true. well, let me put it this way. Let's start. Just with a general thumbs up, thumbs down. How do we feel about this, Steve? What do you think? I, mm, mm. <laughs> if you ask me, the first half of the book, I'd have given okay. you a thumbs up. I 
I'm I'm going to I think I'm going to get it like a middle thumb or if I have to choose between the two it would be a thumbs okay. down. I think. All right. Yeah. Amanda, we're only talking in extreme here. Oh, oh, we're only talking in extremes. Then I would give it a thumbs down. Thumbs down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm down. right. Yeah. I'm right with you. I think like yeah, just just a basic yes or no. I would say no. There are things that I liked about it and things that I didn't like. Yeah. <laughs> While we're doing a little background here on the story, one thing that really stood out for me is the character of Beck. So Beck is an antagonist late in the novel. She's an mm. imperial that that Han and Leia mm. have some um, have a have a run in with. And I guess this is also a good time to say just a general spoiler warning, because we're not going to be able to get through this book without like, yeah, I don't really feel like there's much to be spoiled. It's not like there's big twists or anything, but like we have to say, but just so you know, right. Yeah. So I read this thing with with Beck. She shows up and she feels like a developed character. And I felt like I missed something. Did you guys find this? Were you like, who is Mm -hmm. the person? (laughs) Same, same. Yeah. Well, I mean, they kept alluding to the fact that she she knew Han, and I was yeah. like, okay, so some character from the past. Yeah. But just from references they kept giving, I was like, but there's more here that I feel like either I thought yeah. maybe it would be opened up later on, but then it never was. It was just kind of assumed that everybody and knew. Ex- and I was they like, didn't explain oh, it. No. Either. No, like, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, I knew her from the past. Past yeah. what? Like a battle or a <laughs> mission or like, come on, like. I Give solved the mystery, crumb. gang. It's a deep cut. I thought maybe this was somebody from Solo, the movie, that I wasn't remembering because we do have some nice layering in of, like, I think the Claudia Gray Leia book is referenced a time or two. Um, Han specifically mentions Kira mm. from okay. Solo. Kira we was have referenced, the, the yeah. reference to Urso and everything like that. But Alicia Beck was a character that was created for a junior novel uh, by Greg Rucka called Smuggler's Run. And it was a story that was set immediately following a new hope where Han's about to go off and Leia's like, I just need you to go and pick up this rebel and bring him back and then you can go. And it's it's a quickie. Like the audiobook is like three hours or something like that. Mm. So not a, not a super well-known oh, book, okay. but Beck is the main antagonist of that. And so once I found that out, I went and checked it out and I read the book. And honestly, I wish that we were talking about Smuggler's Run today because I really like Smuggler's Run. <laughs> I really did. Really? I really did. Oh, and man. in it, Beck is the, she's the main like Imperial antagonist. And there's this big thing where there's bounty hunters and there's the, the empire. And they're all kind of looking for this guy that Han is trying to smuggle out there. And Han pulls off this thing where he gets Beck to fight the bounty hunters and the bounty hunters to fight the Imperials and make it. So everybody thinks they're fighting the rebels. So Han very publicly huh. in front of a, like a big group of Imperials and a big group of bounty hunters makes Beck look like a complete idiot and gets away with it. Yeah. Uh, so that's why she that's hates why his she guts in this him. book. Perfect. <laughs> I, all, I, all he had to say was, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I tricked her one time to fight the guys that were trying to fight me. So yeah, made her look like a fool. That, that would have been, that would have been enough. Right, Amanda? I know. You like, oh, run. Yeah, yeah, you could have yeah. run with that and been like, fine. But, Perfect. So it's so weird to me because it's not even like this is a children's book. You know, this is like we wouldn't even put this in the young adult section. This is in our our junior level section, which is for like eight to 12 year olds. And that's where this antagonist came from. And I just why do you do that? Yeah, (laughs) it's strange. Clearly, she thinks that everyone's Star Wars knowledge is so deeply rooted that they know even just those aspects of it. Yeah. I don't blame them for wanting to like revisit this character because she is very cool in right. in Smuggler's Run and like Han like really making a fool of her like that is kind of a compelling like revenge plot mm-hmm. but it's weird that it's not like a sequel to that book and she comes in so late it's not like she's layered throughout this whole book so yeah she does just suddenly appear yeah that to me is really weird and i think it kind of speaks to some of the inherent problems with the disney verse of star wars and everything and it's true of marvel as well where like everything has to be connected like in the extreme yeah (laughs) yeah that's true yeah yeah because han thinking about corellia and thinking about kira just briefly as a throwaway line that's a cool connection to me because like yeah if you've seen solo you know what he's talking about if you haven't seen solo He's reminiscing about like an ex that he hasn't gotten over. And like we we all yeah. understand that, you know? But 
doing this like late minute drop of a character that you're supposed to have read a children's <laughs> book from years ago on yeah. is very weird to me. It's so, it's kind of jarring. <laughs> it is. So I just had to get that out of the way right at the top and say, read Smuggler's Run, everyone, because it's uh, it's fun. Smuggler's <laughs> Run by uh by Greg Rucka. I'm surprised because one of the one of the things that I had a real issue with well, with the story. Why don't we do the summary first, just <laughs> oh. so we can tell everybody what we're talking about? Okay, yeah, yeah. Before we get into it. Publisher Summary, The Princess and the Scoundrel. The Death Star is destroyed. Darth Vader is dead. The Empire is desolated. But on the forest moon of Endor, amongst the chaos of a changing galaxy, time stands still for a princess and her scoundrel. After being frozen in carbonite, then risking everything for the rebellion, Han is eager to stop living his life for other people. He and Leia have earned their future together a thousand times over. And when he proposes to Leia, it's the first time in a long time he's had a good feeling about this. I get it. I get it. (laughs) For Leia, a lifetime of fighting doesn't truly seem over. There is still work to do, penance to pay for, the dark secret she knows runs through her veins. Her brother, Luke, is offering her that chance, one that comes with family and the promise of the Force. But when Han asks her to marry him, Leia finds her answer immediately on her lips. Yes. But happily ever after doesn't come easily. After their beautiful ceremony, led by Logre and the Ewoks, Han and Leia depart from Endor for their honeymoon, only to find themselves on the grandest and most glamorous stage of all. The Halcyon, a luxury vessel on a very public journey to the most wondrous worlds in the galaxy. Their marriage and the peace and prosperity it represents is a lightning rod for everyone in the galaxy, including Imperial remnants still clinging to power. Facing their most desperate hour, the soldiers of the Empire have dispersed across the galaxy, retrenching on isolated worlds vulnerable to their influence. As the Halcyon travels from world to world, one thing becomes abundantly clear. The war is not over. But as danger draws closer, Han and Leia find that they fight their best battles, not alone, but as husband and wife. Roll credits. Look, Amanda and I have done four (laughs) Star Wars podcasts on May the 4th in a row where we haven't liked the books. Oh, it's true. Two of those have been with this Endorian life. I feel like we have to make a vow here and now that next year, one of us is going to pick a book that we already like and the others are going to read it so we can talk about a good one. Yeah. Good plan. That's so true. Well, this okay. The problem I had was that every character in this book, no matter how insignificant, seemed to be suspicious in some mm. way. Literally everyone. Mm. Even to like the first officer from the bridge of the Halcyon, mm-hmm. all the way to like, I mean, the only guy that's really was suspicious was the, the tractor beam guy. But they, she painted him to be obviously yeah. suspicious. There wasn't like these weird descriptors about him. And so I was like, every time like there was an engagement or something, something happening, I was like, <laughs> is this important to the story? Or, or is this just like, is this like a conversation yeah. in the hallway? You know, like, and so that bothered, I, I don't know, for some reason it bothered me. Hmm. Because I thought, well, she makes everyone seem like they're in on it. So there's a lot of misdirection and red herrings, things like that. <laughs> Oh, maybe well, I wonder, I wonder if some of mm. that is only added to because, like, Leia is forever in this uh, position of having to interact with all of these various politicians yeah. and remain diplomatic, but she's under surveillance yeah. all the time. So there's this always level mm. of tension that's kind of there that makes you think, yeah. okay, when are, when are the pieces going to fall and something's going to happen and she's going to be found out or something, mm-hmm. you know, something's going to go wrong. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I can I can agree with that. I mean, that is that is a good point. Yeah, that's and I think the audio book hurt that too. When when they'd have a conversation, main, mainly a, a or like a meaningless conversation, all the mu- all of a sudden the music would would kind of chime. Oh, that's in with true. Like this eerie music. So, so I'm like, oh, this is important. Yeah, but no, it just was not important at all to the story. It's just it was a filler for a fact. And so, yeah, yeah. and it, I think I think that caused a lot of like misdirection and suspicion and and then you know the book ended i'm like oh well that <laughs> you know i, I kind of 
I kind of called it, but like there was, it was a little bit different than I thought because mm. I thought more stuff was going to be a you part of it. You had made a bigger you know? plot than they so, than they had written. It was like two books in one. One, the book first half was like awesome with the Ewoks, and I'm not just saying that because because <laughs> you uh, love of our Ewok podcast, but <laughs> it just was written better. I think. I think the flow made more sense. Uh, at that point, and then we all of a sudden were on a strange world, mm-hmm. on a strange you know, or a strange ship going on a strange world with strange people that we had never met except for Beck. Um, so it was and, met Beck. Yeah, just yeah, just me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nick met Beck. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I honestly, I feel like if if you're writing a book like this, like the number one rule, the the most important thing is. Han and Leia's relationship. Like, mm. is the relationship yeah. right? Does it ring true? And I can say pretty comfortably that I think <laughs> the answer to that is universally no. It doesn't feel right. Yeah, no. it doesn't ring That's true. one of my notes. That's one of my notes that I was like, man, it, it didn't feel like a now. Na- I mean, what did I even write? Just didn't feel like a natural relationship. Oh, yeah. And oh. so, like, you know, I said weak relationship dynamics that I was just like constantly thinking, like, this is not really how people argue. Even people who I know. don't really like each other yeah. or people who are both hard headed. Like I just think of like me and my wife, we're both hard headed. We don't argue like this is weird. Yeah. They just would get explosive so quick, oh, yeah. you know? And yeah. so we yeah, argue about the dumbest things. Right. You know, I, I think they're kind of reduced <laughs> to like stereotypes, you know, where Han's like, well, I want to go out and have fun. And Leia's like, well, I want to be the president, you know? And it just like yeah. <laughs> makes this very, like stereotypical cheesy totally normal, relationship yeah. and it's like everything we see with them on screen is just like pure chemistry you know oh and yeah like mm-hmm. you can the chemistry of characters in novels like it, it, it's you can feel it and it's not there you know it yeah, is, it's, it's not, not there here and i think um amanda and i we tried so hard not to talk about this <laughs> like just walking around the library but we, we'd start talking we'd be <laughs> yeah. like shut up shut up we have to record oh, it wait, we have to talk about <laughs> that later <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but one of the things that she and I were talking about when we shouldn't have been talking about it because we weren't recording was that, you know, when you've seen the sequel trilogy, you know how this relationship ends. And so, mm-hmm. like, knowing that they drift apart, like, knowing that they have, like, this period of estrangement, nothing in this book lends itself towards that story. You yeah. know, it's just this very yeah. cheesy, I think, like, romance, the way it all Hallmark plays out has- with Hans. Well... Yes, Han's proposal uh, and Mon Mothma being like, let me plan yeah. the wedding for you and let me throw you a honeymoon. It's just like Mon Mothma. I will do it right like, after the Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Crazy. So I just thought of something and maybe let's chew on this one for a little bit. Oh, let's do it. The, the fact that like t- uh, tense times like that, right? Like, um, I read this somewhere that like when two people come together because of like, say... A, a, a crazy circumstance, like mm-hmm. a man and a woman were captured, held yeah. captive, or something that, and they kind of it kind of brings them together, right? right? Some kind right. of trauma or in real life, crippling an empire, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, sort of like the empire. Yeah, <laughs> that there, there is that chemistry because of it, or immediately after. Yeah. But then, as the time goes on, the the thing that held them together was that traumatic event right. and they're trying to get over that and the relationship starts to kind Dissolve. of yeah decompress yeah, yeah. or d- d- dissolve right and so it's in in this it felt like their relationship was already immediately dissolved even so even though this is supposed to be like yeah days after yeah. they almost seem like hans back to his like i want to be a bachelor but i kind of want to get married but yeah. you know there's no it just was weird to me that it just felt unnatural. Yeah, reading it, I had to actually keep reminding myself that this is "quote unquote" Han and Leia, even though it really didn't feel yeah. like Han and Leia in so many no. ways. Just like you, like you said, mm-hmm. Steve, about like their conversations or their 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 immediate blow up points of just their arguments, and then splitting apart, coming back together, kind of, and just arguing, nitpicking about this, that, and the other thing. And it was, in- I thought it was interesting yeah. when you mentioned, especially that you liked the first half of the book, but not so much the second. I was flipped because once they actually got into a bit more of a crisis point on Madurs, 
and had to start dealing with the whole moon situation and figuring out what was going on with all the people there, etc. And their focus was more joint uh, oriented. I liked it better. Like it still, I just still didn't think it, it was great, better. but I preferred yeah. it. Yeah, it did work better. And they work much better together in a crisis point than they do when things are just kind of placid. Yeah. That actually makes a lot of sense. All the all the dialogue on the Halcyon was just like, oh. I know it was. Oh, I was slogging oh, through it. So dumb. Yeah. <laughs> the period on the Halcyon too felt like it was the entire book. Like it felt oh. like, all right, let's read six hundred pages about the Halcyon. It was just right. a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're right too, Steve. It felt like two books. Like the first half is, oh look, we're on, we're getting married on Endor, and then we're on the Halcyon. But then, oh, we're on this moon, and mm-hmm. we're in this battle crisis situation. It felt very disjointed yeah. in some ways. Well, I kind of wondered well, the too. The Halcyon like, got. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. That's what I was going to say. Go ahead. I was going to say the Halcyon got spotlighted so much that I was just like, man, where have we boarded this <laughs> ship yet? Like, we're still talking about. At one point, I was just like, oh my gosh, like, what's going on? Well, it made all sen- a bunch of sense. I was at a comic book store looking for an Ewok comic, and there's a whole series on the Halcyon. Oh. Like, like Halcyon Adventure. Oh. And probably so many of those characters that we read in this where it's like everybody here has got a personality, everybody here has got a thing. I mean, they're probably characters in the comic series that they're trying to like flesh out, you know, across different mediums. And it just, you know, yeah, it kind of slams the brakes on the story a little bit. Mm, yeah. Here's some things that I liked. All right. I thought each character, okay. each character had a struggle that I thought was really uh, unique to them and things that I have not really seen mm. investigated before. So mm. for Han, that was that was dealing with the gap in his life from the carbonite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love the references to yeah, that I, multiple times. That time. was really interesting. Really good. The way that he would be like, why the heck are Leia and Chewbacca close? And then he's like, right, right? because they like live live together for yep. a year. You know, and he <laughs> kept they kept having those moments. And I thought that was really cool. And I yeah. truly have never even seen a reference to that in another book. Have you, Steve? No, yeah. I mean, he even referenced Luke. Like, yeah. Luke was totally different. Yeah, it was totally different. Yeah, yeah. you know. And so, I, I that that was good, right? Beth was wise to include stuff like that. I really like that. that really too. made it like that's now. now okay, now it's Han. It yeah. really is yeah. Han. Yeah, you know. Yeah, when they worked together, they were better. That's the thing because their relationship's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> For Leia, it was all the all the stuff of her dealing with um, mm. Darth Vader and like worrying oh, yeah. about the dark side because. You know, we have a trilogy yeah. of movies with Luke coming to terms with Darth Vader being his father, and Leia gets it mm-hmm. like, "Oh, hey, by the way, Darth Vader's, you know, your dad, and I'm your brother, and goodbye." And it's Please like, "Please absorb this." And Good ever... Yeah, and like I've seen that touched upon. Like I think Zahn touches on that a little bit with her kind of dealing with the the Vader, you know, legacy. But mm-hmm. this was it was really a spotlight for her, and I I did buy that struggle when Luke yeah. comes to her and is like come and train with me and be a Jedi. And she's like, no, I choose my own happiness. <laughs> that to me felt very unlayalike. like, but dealing with the Vader stuff. Yeah. I bought. Yeah. I did really appreciate that they did that. And just like the, mm-hmm. the one or several segments probably where she talks about how, so when this goes public, because of course someone's going to find it or she chooses to reveal it. When this goes public, all of my current work is all of my past work is going to be questioned and anything that I try to do going mm-hmm. forward from here is also going to be under yeah. a lot of scrutiny because everybody's right. going to think, oh, it's Darth Vader's daughter. Clearly, she's going to go off the yeah. deep end and try and take over the galaxy. Yeah. Which I hadn't thought of before. Yeah. And in well, other books that I've read, uh, like you said, Nick, I don't think I've heard it mentioned. Or even if it's just mentioned, it's a, oh, well, you know, she's Darth Vader's daughter. The only book that I know of where there's a bit more depth of that explored is um, it's called Tatooine's Ghost by, oh, yeah. I think it's Troy Denning, right. where mm-hmm. um, I don't exactly remember the full premise of it, but she ends up on Tatooine and kind of has this encounter with Darth Vader's ghost. And it's sort of her coming to terms with him as her father and just like learning to forgive him kind of. So, and I thought that was an interesting exploration, but it was never a, when the public finds out, this is what they're yeah. going to think. Yeah. So yeah, I did really like that element. I thought that was very interesting to explore. I do as well, though I thought, really? Like, you really think that, like, after you, <laughs> after all you did to destroy the Death Star twice, 
all the stormtroopers you've killed. Like, if you were really working for your dad, would you have allow- allowed Alderaan to be destroyed? You That's know, like, fair. so, like, when she said that, I was like, oh, that makes sense, but you kind of have a track record that proves otherwise, right? So, like, only I was thinking, like, man, only like, only somebody on like a back back end world or an outer rim world would think, oh, Leia, you know, oh, that's her father. Oh, I believe that. You know, the f- closer you get into the center of the universe, people know who Leia is and how much she's yeah. done. Oh, I guess I wondered like how much Senate opposition would come into play. Like if somebody wanted her position, they uh, might yeah. use that as a... That's true. Yeah. You use the leverage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you try to put it in real world terms, Right after 9-11, if Osama bin Laden's daughter came and was like, hey, I really helped all this, and now I'm going to be the Secretary of State of the United States, everybody would be like, no, you're yeah, not. That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. no. doesn't matter what you've done. It's not happening. Oh, so, yeah, know? it makes sense. Like, yeah, we appreciate what you've done, Leia, yeah. but... You've yeah. lost all you trust just that we may have. Because of, yeah, because of it, you, you got to yeah. step down. That would make sense. Like, she's... So she's all that she's done and could do is right. destroyed, right. basically. Right. Yeah, it's like doing what she sense. did and then letting that come out is kind of like the noble sacrifice because it's not her. It's not, you know, it's the sins of the father, right? I mean, it's not her. It's, right. you know, but I still think you'd have to walk away from that at a real life situation. And I have just never thought about that before in, in terms of Leia. And I like that they addressed it and made it kind of realistic. So yeah, yeah. those are the two things that I was like, all right. I do like that. <laughs> Yay, like we that. found some good I... points. Yeah. So in conjunction with this book, I read um, Courtship of Princess Leia again. Just cause Oh, you did? Okay. It deals with a lot of... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. One. I just finished it this evening, actually. And I found some interesting parallels, And but I uh, ultimately, I still like Courtship better than I do this book. Um, like the big oh yeah uh, yeah great book. Oh, I really enjoy it oh. but like the first portion I had forgotten like how much like it's all like a triangulation because this happen mm-hmm. prince named Isolder has come and has been like BT dubs I'm gonna give the new republic all of this support if Leia marries me uh-huh. and so she's feeling like yep. super pressured from this and he's like don't worry, take a lot of time blah 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 and meanwhile Han is like uh I thought you loved me. I thought we were going to be together, etc. <laughs> and so ultimately, his his plan is to kidnap her and take her to a world that he has won in a Sabat game. Yeah, and which he does. Which <laughs> terrible plan! I mean, yeah. I was reading. I was like, this is a ter- so terrible way to have a relationship. Like mm-hmm. they have all these kind of petty fights beforehand. I'm like, this is a terrible way to have a relationship. But then he's like gonna kidnap her i got no other cards to play this is a great yeah. plan yeah so the first half it was it was kind of clunky to be honest but i really did like it like once they get to the planet and the empire has interdicted it it's it's dathomir so which i thought was cool because yeah. they did take that at least from the now legacy series and they incorporated mm. it into some of the more recent shows which was yeah cool. yeah but just the dynamics of their relationship in that i feel like was so much better yeah. than this particular book yeah. and like i enjoyed too that they brought luke into the whole fold of the story as opposed yeah. to yeah. the most recent book that we just read and it's just han and leia chewie's not yeah. there 3po and r2 aren't there so we've lost some of the other main characters uh-huh. and we've boiled it down luke's not even on endor he's not even on endor oh, no. he's gone he's just so gone. he was there for the wedding yeah, he was there for the wedding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. He was yeah. there. And I did appreciate Brief, briefly. Wicket, Wicket and Low Gray and Chief Chirpa all got shout outs, which was fun. Um, yeah, that yeah, was cool. yeah. I think that's something that was sorely missing from this. And that's just a B plot. Mm. You know, like let, let Han and Leia be doing their stuff and yeah. let us kick back to whatever Luke is doing or whatever Lando's doing. Just give us something else that's not this yeah. like constant bickering because. Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't working anyway, but I think just narratively to have sort of a backup story happening or let something play out on mm-hmm. Endor or like whatever, I think would have really helped because it, I don't know, like it, it felt like this took forever to read. And it, I think part of yes. that was because it felt like a run on sentence, you know, it was like, mm-hmm. we never got a break. Mm-hmm. 
and it was yeah it was so much bickering and and they went so heavy on the relationship and then didn't ever nail the relationship you're right there was no b characters it was no. it, it was two a's yeah han and leia and then yeah. everyone else was like c's right. Yeah. There was no one else there to kind of carry this help carry the story as it went along. Yeah. Because it kind of went Endor, then Halcyon, yes. then Madurs. Right. And yeah. it was just like, oh, you know, it was different people people at each section yeah. too. You know, there was no for, one for else say, to carry it along. Like, use Beck, you know? Right. Like have Beck come in the beginning and be having some something else, like follow her from the destruction of the second Death Star. All the yeah. way to when she meets at Han and Leia. We needed another story that was running parallel yeah. that would eventually fold in. And having Beck yep. there, I think, would have been a really nice... If you're not going to do Luke or something. Right. Like, I think that us using Beck would have been a good choice. Yeah, I think it would have helped smooth mm. things, for sure. Yeah, it would have brought the story around. This mm -hmm. way, it just ended, and it was just like... Yeah. I mean, an aspect of it got brought around, but I, like, called it. Right. I called right. it with the, with the yeah. engineer. Oh, I was just like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna we're gonna we're yeah. gonna be using <laughs> him later for yep. sure." You know? <laughs> yeah. When Han didn't blast you about the airlock. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. It, well, it was also when it was like, "Oh, the space station and it's got repulsors. What are they gonna do?" And I'm like, uh, "Gee, wait. what guy do we know that's in this <laughs> sector who can deal what? with this?" Wait a minute. <laughs> now it happened differently than I thought. But this, but it still got the guy still got used. Right. You know, I thought, oh, they're just gonna lock on and pull it out. Yeah. This yeah. was particularly tough because, like, Leia has always been my favorite. I love a good Leia book, you know, and like I, I always loved the the Han and Leia dynamic. And I think, like, you know, in the expanded universe and like the classic expanded universe, they have this somewhat idyllic, if unrealistic, relationship. You know, where they have children and they have this long, like pretty happy marriage together for decades and decades into the future, which like is very storybook. And I like that. And at first when you saw, I remember so, so clearly the crawl of For force awakens when it says Leia Organa and I'm waiting for the solo and it wasn't there. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> yep. I know. Brutal, man. I know. I felt the same. I was like, uh, we're, we're missing something here. <laughs> it was, but I, also, I bought it. Okay. The scene that they have where where he's like, I just, you know, I went back to what I knew best. And she's like, yeah, so did I. You know, I I think that's a much more realistic ending to the characters that you see in the movie. As much as I love what happens in the expanded universe, like those two, it's like Greece, you know, like you're not going to stay yeah. married. You know what I mean? It's not going to work. Mm, oil and water. <laughs> 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 This is the first in like the Disney era where they've had a book that's really like let's let's like hammer in on Han and Leia and to give it to somebody mm. with not like not True. a ton of, of experience in Star Wars, someone mm. who's like not tested with these characters is just a that's a swing, you know. Mm -hmm. And and unfortunately, it was a swing and a miss. It is. That's true. Yeah. I mean, especially for characters that are so well, so established in people's minds and people have such an idea of them. If they were new characters, she could have run anywhere with them. But yeah, it's hard to take characters that are so grounded and be like, okay. Well, that's why I think comparing mm -hmm. this book to Alphabet Squadron last year, Alphabet Squadron, other than like uh, some cameos from Hera from Rebels, it was all original characters. So, you know, it's all new. We, could, we could pick or choose, like or dislike, just based on the merits of the characters. Yeah. But here... Yeah. The characters, I think the characters come off as irritating regardless, but like, hmm. you know how they're going to act in a situation and when they don't, it's yeah. just like really <laughs> weird, you know? And so yeah. that's- Yeah, because that's really we know them so over. much, right? Exactly. It, it does seem like she, Beth Revis is maybe not as, maybe not a huge Star Wars fan. I don't know. I mean, maybe. Yeah. Right. But writing, I, I see that challenge of like, yeah. all right, now I got to write similarly to what they how they act and i don't know maybe that's a bigger challenge than i thought you know well, i wonder i wonder how much of it is like and if it's like if you're a painter of some variety which you know she's an author but she's almost trying to paint like somebody yeah. else's because the, like i said the characters are so well developed and so you have to change your brush stroke and your pattern and what you do so yeah. i haven't read any of her other books and maybe her other books are great but in this this context mm -hmm. yeah it's hard to just change your tack and be like okay you are bottlenosed with star yeah. wars you really yeah. are and then your your critics are the harshest critics 
that's the thing yeah. too you know mm-hmm. like we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna pick it apart you know so. yeah i just feel like again knowing knowing where the characters end up in the force awakens and beyond i think it would have been really interesting if this book yeah. was kind of setting up that end game i wonder though if it's possible because i know we had mentioned or we had talked loosely on this before yeah. like if maybe this was sort of just the start of things and then there'll be books in the future that kind of lend itself to that slow de- degradation perhaps because uh, like we had mentioned yeah. before that when we watched the films we were like okay did they get married or was it just uh, a brief sling uh, or just kind yeah, of a time off relationship or where are they that going? is something that i was thinking about in this i was actually a little surprised that they went for such a traditional like Hans basically down on one knee being like, will you do me the privilege of being my wife? I didn't think we were really going to go for a wedding. Right. I thought it was just going to be more like we're in this together. You know, yeah, so I was a little right? surprised. It was great though, that it was an Ewok wedding. And that's, I, I don't know. Of I just course. thought, I thought, she, I thought Beth, Beth cool. Revis really did the Ewoks a, a service, right? Like how much you want to bet she didn't watch the Ewok television show. Oh, Oh, wait, when was this book published? Just she could have been <gasps> Yeah, she could have been listening to May our 22. show. Beth. Oh, geez. Do Beth, you... if you need help with the second book, <laughs> bring it right back Do you think around. She's listening now because well, we haven't been kind. Oh. Well, mm. there's there's still hope. <laughs> Rebellions yeah, are built is. on hope. All right. So that's right. That's right. You know, you're right, though, you to, bring, to bring it back to Ewok, it's Steve. True. I can't think of anything outside of the cartoon, like the things that we've covered, the cartoon, the mm-hmm. movies, the, the Zach Dialongo thing. This is the first time that we've really had an expansion of Ewok lore. Yeah. You know, because the Ewoks don't have a big part in the book. So to see this whole ceremony and she did bring in like the tree of life and stuff like that, which she is really from did. the cartoon, not yeah. the movies. And so, I thought that was going to be the Sun Star, but there was like really no, like, I was like, oh, is it the Sun Star? I, I got to know, know, you know? I wondered if it was the, the heart star too. I know. Heart I had the same thought. Yeah. So yeah, I did. I mean, that's that. I guess that's another thing I gotta say. The, the Ewok content was great. A. Eh? I was happy to I have it. I think it was. And it's, I'm, we only we know, right? I mean, somebody mm. else reading the book yeah. is probably just like, I don't know. It was like just Ewoks. But here I am yeah. going like that's you know that's why like look if it, if if the second half of the book was like the first half, I would have I would have given it a thumbs up. I think it lost. I think when. For me, because I'm not on the Halcyon, maybe if I had read the Halcyon comic books, I'd be a little bit more like, oh, hey, here's another, yeah. you yeah. know. So maybe that's to my detriment that I didn't get the references in the st- entire second half of the book, basically. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. so that for me. makes no <laughs> sense. I mean, you can't write like that. You can't write. Oh, I'm going to write this book in hopes that somebody's written like or read like a, a young adult series. For, That's yeah, crazy. like I'm turning no, forward to this year. I'm not going to be in the young adult section going, ooh, a Star Wars book, you know. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, and it's been a while since I've been in a comic book store. So seeing that Halcyon stuff, it was just like, oh, yeah, you know, oh, shoot, yeah. you know, I could have. It was the one I sent you was issue four. So I have no idea. Maybe it okay. did spring. From yeah, maybe this it is really tight series, in. you know. Who knows? They were yeah. writing writing about the Halcyon at the same time or something. But... Yeah, I wouldn't automatically write this author off based on this. Like I did. Yeah, I did feel like there was strengths yeah. in the writing, and I, and and I think th- the fact that we we're able to say three distinctive things that were new in the mm-hmm. Star Wars world. You know, the the expansion of the Ewoks. Leia dealing with the Vader stuff, Han dealing with the lost time. Mm -hmm. That's stuff that like I've never seen elsewhere. And so like, I got to give her props for that. Yeah. Um, We got to see Leia like legit use the force, which was really cool. And like, yeah. And so it was just like that neophyte development, which was awesome. Yeah. When she tried to use it, it didn't work. But when she let go and cleared her mind, that's when it worked. And I thought that was like, ah, (laughs) She watched yeah. the Jedi again. Yeah. And the struggle that she had too was just like the concern about, okay, if I connect with the yeah. force, am I going to turn into the my dynamic. father? And just that yeah. sort of friction there was about being like, oh, I kind of like this power, but then trying to grapple with that and not like concede and just yeah. fall the dark side like, yeah. or, like Darth yeah. Vader did, which I thought was cool. And I felt like the other part that she did nail about her character was like, especially towards the end when. 
there was the uncertainty about whether or not Maduro's would survive or if it would just completely yeah. collapse and like her concern certainly for the people but also how it just sort of triggered back yeah. to how she lost Alderaan yep. and the displacement that had yep. caused within the people that were still alive from it and how she really didn't want that for yep. everyone that was there and just how it really impacted her. I was like, yeah, yeah that, that, that yeah. strikes now me you're as reminding Leia. me of things that I do like. Yeah. <laughs> had this novel just followed Leia or just followed Han, maybe we would <laughs> be talking about a book that we liked, you know, because I think we're all that, like, yeah, that'd be the problem here was the bad attempt at romance. You know? Yeah, I wonder if the book written in yeah. solely Leia's perspective, That's or I mean. in no one's yeah. perspective, just a just a, a you know a narration of what's yeah. happening like may have third, been a little yeah, bit third, better. Third yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I would I would read her I would read her Jin or so book Rebel Rising. You know, yeah. like I could see that. That was a great a name yeah. drop, right? I, yeah, it was for yeah. me. I was just like, I had to rewind. I was like. That that little engineer guy just said Urso. I was like, yeah. no way. I, yeah. So I thought that. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I know. Like, that I know that guy. Yeah, I that love cool. bringing in that Rogue One universe. That's I really love that. I, know you do. I wonder if it might have worked better if there had been a bit more time for the relationship mm -hmm. to build, as opposed to straight after Return of the Jedi. Now we're getting married. Yeah. yeah. Because like with courtship, it's set like yep. four years after Return yep. of the Jedi, so there's been some time that's passed, and the and they're dealing with the factions of the Empire that still exists, but it's not a okay. Death Star's done. Now we get yeah, married, that, yeah, and then really we move on too from early. There. I think so. I just early. it's really wild. It's really wild yeah. because when they get married, I feel like they've spent like a week together. <laughs> you know, so even if even if you flipped yes. all this like yes. even if you had the uh, like the halcyon stuff and everything they're just on some diplomatic mission or something and it ends maybe in a marriage right that yeah. is kind of what they did with courtship it didn't like it started out and everything was all uncertain yeah. and at the end it is actually their marriage which is super truncated as opposed mm -hmm. to this one which had more like build up and um just yeah. how they experienced it whereas with it was from luke's point of view he gets there late because of a mix up. Yep. He gets there late and he he's like standing yep. at the back and he sees them and everything and they're going through their vows and whatnot and getting married. So it was a very interesting shift of perspective between the two books of how it played out, which I thought was interesting. No Ewok rings uh made of tree sap nope. in courtship of Princess nope. Leia. So so yeah, that's true. That. No, it was on Coruscant, interestingly. Oh, okay. Oh man. Oh the speaking of the wedding, real quick. That did remind me of one thing that Beth Revis wrote that I thought was really poignant and only because I experienced it when during the ceremony, she described it as that moment where everyone was looking at Han and Han was looking mm -hmm. back and the doors open. And there was a moment where he and his wife or he and Leia were looking at each other. And no one else was looking at her mm -hmm. yet. Like, right, mm. where it was, like, they shared that mm -hmm. moment. Everyone's looking at Han, but Leia, and, yeah. uh, you know, and then everyone yeah. turns to look at, at Leia, right? And I thought, oh, that was really cool because, like, I remember mm -hmm. that when the doors open and the music changes and everyone's still looking at me, but then they, they're like, oh, okay, the music's changing. And they turn, and I thought, oh, yeah. Yeah. That was done well. Cool. Yeah, that was a nice that moment. Was done really that well. was a nice moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a nice moment because I was like, I had that moment in my mm -hmm. life. Nice. Yeah. What a great Star Wars tie-in. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> bum, 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 yeah. bum, bum. I, I couldn't recommend this book. I couldn't recommend this book. There are things like I've enjoyed our conversation about it. Yeah. I enjoy the things yeah. that we pulled out of it. But I if somebody was like, oh, should I read it? I'd be like, you should not. No. How do you guys <laughs> feel? I would suggest Courtship of Princess Leia. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed that book when I read it, and I read it as mm -hmm. a teen. Same. And I remember being like, stupid book. It's courtship of princess and i like just yeah. randomly one night started it and i was like i can't stop <laughs> reading this and i was embarrassed that it was like 14 years old reading a book courtship of princess leia you know like that was embarrassing but it was such a good book it does flow uh, that really I quickly would, honestly the courtship of princess yeah. leia has like a special place in my like my mind and my heart because it was the book that i was reading yeah uh when my wife like when we for our first date like I, that was what I was reading. Like at that time, just by coincidence. Oh, nice! So whenever I see that book, I always remember that. Like when we first started, like liking each other, I was reading the courtship of Princess Leia. 
Oh, that's cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, for you House Things listeners, if you're local to the David A. Howe Public Library, you can come and check out The Princess and the Scoundrel right here. We also have it on our Libby app. So if you're using Libby, you can get it on the audiobook or ebook, whatever you like. Uh, also in the House Things feed, up next is going to be the Pride Month book club that we're doing. And you can go back into the feed and listen to the Poetry Month book club uh, that Malik and I just did, covering Me Moth by Amber McBride, which was good and, and a very twisty uh, poetry and verse kind of thing. Uh, mm. Here on this Andorian Life, up next, we're digging into some classic Star Wars comics. We're going to read the uh, Star Wars Ewoks crossover comics uh, to set up our reading of droids. And then we've got the Return of the Jedi 40th anniversary, where we're reading the new Alyssa Wong Ewok comic and the Return of the Jedi novelization. So lots of reading. A lot of reading on this podcast in the next uh, couple episodes, Steve. I'm sorry. It's not making me do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. We we can all tell I don't read good. <laughs> well, Amanda, thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. Always oh, enjoyable. Absolutely. All right. Well, Amanda, we'll see you next year. Steve, I'll see you next week. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> happy International Star Wars Day. Right. May the 4th be with That's you. Right. I get it. <laughs> if I can say it correctly. It. May the 4th. I think you got it. Be with you. Perfect. <laughs> this Endorian Life was brought to you by the Radio Meanwhile Network. Other shows on the network include 90s Music Got Me Like, 9021 Here We Go, and previously on X-Men. Share your thoughts on this and upcoming episodes by following us on Facebook or Twitter at Endorian Life. And please rate, subscribe, and share the show wherever you get your podcasts. 